This is Dragon the Pot, and I welcome you wholeheartedly back to my channel. Today, we're continuing our video series, Recipe for a Good Story, where we discuss storytelling techniques and how to improve on them. Today's topic, what if I, when players say no? Today, we're going to be delving into the difficulties with storytelling when the players don't do as expected or planned. So the first thing to figure out is what did they say no to? Is it something about your prepared material? Is it your maps or your notes? The, this would be the case if they simply refuse to walk into a room or walk into your pre prepared trap. Or if in presenting your information, they simply refuse to go into a certain area. Maybe your players said no to traveling along a route a given direction upon the presentation of your of your mission. Or is it some detail of the mission that they said no to? This would be the case if you have an individual that has a particular dislike for elves or dwarves or gnomes, and they are wanting very specifically to walk away from the mission in order to aid these groups. Is it something to do with research or beforehand preparation that they said no to? Are you, did you give them too much to read beforehand? Do you have a novel of 30 pages of backstory for each each character that they're supposed to read and be aware of and interact with about their hometown, town, their history? Is it something that you're asking them to do that you might look at cutting back a little bit in regards to what they prepared or what you prepared and are expecting them to come prepared having read or done beforehand? Or, like I said, is it something about the mission? Is it a term or condition of the mission that they said no to? Whether this be, like I said, going a per to a particular location that they said no to, or is it some aspect of the mission that they just do not want to deal with? Or perhaps it is their reward. It, did they say no to the money that you're willing to give them? Do they feel like you're giving them too much, too little reward? Or is it just so ambiguous that they're not sure whether it's going to be worth it? Maybe you need to hash these details out a little more fully before they're satisfied and will continue with the mission. Once you identify what this is, you can move on. So the next question you need to ask is, why did they say no? This becomes vital in being able to help you identify, address, and move on with your story. Was it some factor, like I said, of money? Is some part of the reward insufficient or out of alignment for them? This would be the case for a player who either feels that they are more valuable to the group and feels they deserve a greater share, or perhaps you've been doling out larger amounts of reward and realizing that you've been handing out too much or trying to scroll back the the payments just a little bit. But if you're, again, with this, if you're not careful, players will try and revolt a little bit. Is it some detail of the mission that they're saying no to? If this is the case, you may be able to figure out is it because of some personal qualm that they may have with the, the detail? Do you, is there some facet of, they again, is it a in-game racism factor that they will not help one group or another because they did some wrong to their, their family somewhere along the line? Is it something that is where the player just feels like they're not being heard 
and they chose this, whether inconvenient or not, time to speak up and try and interject and interact more with the story. Is it or is it more of an issue of a group or organization that they are either working for or against that some facet of a detail struck them as off and that they are not moving until they have more information and can prove for or against their particular intent or desire or organization? Or did they say no because they are center stage grand um, grand ego personality of the group that they are suddenly no longer the spotlight for this mission and because of that they have taken offense at it and are standing up and trying to reinsert themselves as center stage or is it an issue of you have a player who just likes to be a bug in the works they like to throw a wrench or shoe into the cogs of the machine to try and get it to stop and break your brain and plans for no other reason than to sow just a little bit of chaos into the world. Once you know why they said no, you can look into fixing it. But until you know the why, it's going to continue to happen. Once you've identified the problem, the next step is to fix it. And getting yourself back on track is not always an easy, easy process. Don't be afraid to step away from the table. Go get a snack. Go use the restroom. Give yourself a couple minutes to breathe and regroup. Take a look at your, your plan. See if there... See if there's any way you can make adjustments to your existing plan to accommodate for the requirements needed. If, if it's as simple as just change the destination, change a few of the note details, then don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to completely change your plans in regards to a particular set of prepared material. If you've got pictures of starships that you are going to use, but they don't want to use that particular, they don't want to use the ship that you're going to, that you were going to put in front of them. Okay. Keep it flexible. Keep it loose. Don't be afraid to lay aside one set of notes and run off the cuff if needs be. Maybe you need to change the background music in order to reset the tone for what you're trying to do. Reference your notes. Check and see if there's any ideas that you have in place that you can go back to or alter. Maybe if the tower you were going to, maybe they don't want to go there. Maybe they want to go to the north instead of the south. Well, maybe there's a tower that direction too. Maybe they're running into a similar issue. Maybe it's all happening at the same time. Maybe they're all connected. Don't be afraid to adjust your plans to accommodate for what the players are trying to throw a wrench in. And if worse comes to worse, do not be afraid to set the player aside and ask for more information. Say, hey, what's going on? Don't be afraid to ask them to help you out. Your players are your friends. They are there to have fun. And if one of the players just is trying to get some extra attention, give them that extra attention. Talk to them. Find out what's going on. If you need to, don't be afraid to call it a night and regroup your plans based on that. But if you're just starting, don't be afraid to throw your pl your notes off to the side for a second, regroup, come back to them with a fresh set of eyes, and look at what you can do differently. If you can do the same thing in a different manner, don't be afraid to do it. And remember, storytelling should always be fun, both for you and your friends. 
So don't overthink it. Don't overstress it. Doing that makes you your worst enemy. Now, the last step with figuring out what if is preparing for next time. We all know that it is going to happen again. No matter how hard you try, no matter how much you talk with your players, and I do encourage you to do so. Talk with your players, find out what features they did like, what they didn't. If there's storytelling techniques you can investigate for yourself to have them better ready to go. If you need to practice, don't be afraid to sit down with them and and say, I'm going to try and do an off the cuff just so that I can practice this. I don't have anything prepared. It is completely whatever happens, happens. Don't be afraid to do that. But do not try and be clairvoyant. Do not try and read your crystal ball and find out exactly how to manipulate or control the players. If you go that route, it will not end well. Be ready with additional secondary plans of notes, prepared materials. Be ready with a backup plan. If your players do not want your primary option, have a throw out of a backup plan. If you want to have additional information of secondary names, of additional guides that are available, have 10 or so names that you don't have any idea what they're going to be for, but they're there if you need them. Have additional options of, if you're giving them options of hut, of buying, or investing in something, give them the option of A or B. Giving them options will give them freedom and it will feel like they have choices, even if you are mildly manipulating those choices. Okay. A lot manipulating their choices. But give them a choice and make an honest, or at least seemingly honest choice. If you If they are not feeling immersed in it, don't be afraid to prepare additional maps and again keep it keep in mind that you don't want to put so much time and effort in a map that it cannot be used anywhere else have additional material prepped be ready with three or four different options of things you can do if you need to create additional immersion don't be afraid to take some time and make 3d sets of and again I will stress this. Keep it somewhat generic. Make it something you can use again and again and again so that you're not repeating efforts when you really don't need to. One last cautionary I want to stress is if it does come down to it, do not be afraid to sit down with the players, come up with notes, come up with a game plan of things you can do, they can do, to avoid situations that have caused you to derail, but be very careful not to turn it into some kind of Faustian bargain where one group or another has full control of the situation. And again, just be ready for things to go wrong. Because as we all know, Things will and do and will go wrong, both in life and in storytelling. I want to thank you for joining me today on this video of Recipe for a Good Story. What if when the players say no? I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, I would invite you to like, share, and if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so that you'll be notified when new videos are posted. And I hope to see you soon on my next video. Until then, this is Dragon in the Pot, signing off.